Hello and welcome back and that is right today we're returned to the subject of Synology and hardware transcoding. I'm sorry about the sound quality in this video I'm actually recording this vid from home because I'm between projects and running around but thanks to once again Dave Russell and in cooperation with people like Luca over at Black Void and a bunch of people over at the DIY side of things They've now worked out a way to easily and conveniently re-add graphics drivers to the DS225 Plus and the DS425 Plus, aka how to get hardware transcoding back. Now we're going to be going for it step by step today, but just to put it into perspective here on the right hand side of the screen, I'm just going to play this file here. This is an HEVC file. And remember, this isn't about adding HEVC support precisely. This is about adding the ability to convert these files if needed. So Again, whether it is HEVC, H.264, or any uh, codec, the real issue for me is the fact that the removal of those graphics drivers means that regardless of the compression technique, I can't reshape files. Again, if I want to watch my large, dense Blu-ray of style, style file that I've got at home, but I'm watching it on a train or a plane or on holiday, maybe not a plane, I don't want to have to use um, software transcoding to get the job done and as you can see the CPU utilization there is absolutely extreme and that is because we don't have access to those graphics drivers We've done a whole article about it hopefully you can see it on screen now but for now let's go into the guide if you'd rather follow through these steps in a more written form you can head over to 007 REVAD this is Dave's own github repo and you can find out more information about it there as well as support him by a myriad of different means there but this has ultimately got the walkthrough there exactly how to do it as well as extra little bills and whistles that we're going to talk about later on with scheduling this task so it reruns this every time there is a reboot on top of that you can head over to Black Void's own way website here where he has taken uh, bits and bobs uh, of the guides and the recommended walkthroughs for this from the likes of Sino forum and in communication with several other DIYs and of course there at the end we've got my own website here NAS compares I've included it there but realistically I'm just showing you how it's done it's these other guys that have really put the elbow grease in so let's crack on the first thing we're going to need to do is download the source code here this source code compiles the drivers and some of the activity that's going to have to run via that script uh, just click that there and go down to the source code dot zip Go ahead and download that locally. I've already done it there. And the next thing we're going to need to do is not, I repeat, not unpack them here locally on your machine. Head into the NAS system and we're going to need to choose a folder that these resources are going to live within. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just come up with the same one that uh, Dave himself has been utilizing, just the one scripts but you can choose to use whichever one you want to do. Go ahead and create a brand new shared folder, a uh, shared, uh, new shared folder here. So go over there, I'm going to call it just like he did scripts. And this is gonna be one that's in the immediate volume that I've created on my system. We'll talk about that a little bit more in just a moment. We just need to make sure that we've got a good level of access to this. But again, later on, if you are going to be renaming anything, can make sure you've got plenty of access to the account you're going to be using, although later on we will be using root super user access. Just make sure that this folder is findable and you know exactly which directory and indeed which subdirectory it may be found in. It's my one, but it will differ for you. Now you've created that, go into that folder, and now we need to drag and drop that file that we've just downloaded into this folder so we're going to drag and drop it there we're not going to unpack it we just let it go in and once that's done we can crack on with the next step so now you've uploaded it over what you need to do now is right click that file that we've uploaded onto the Synology NAS and then from there select the option to extract or more precisely extract here now keep in mind when it does extract it it will extract it into a new directory but we don't really want that for this for reasons that will become clear you don't have to change anything you just have then have to create a new level of the uh, directory there on that uh, listing there for script slash transcode underscore etc so what i would recommend is at least um, highlight it control x go back one level and paste it directly into here. But I would say, again, maybe that's not for you. I don't know how you're gonna run your scripts. It's tidier, I would argue, to have individual folders. 
but for this cleanless, the cleanness of the link we're going to be using, I would recommend doing that. So now that's done, we have to go on to the next step. So the next step is whether you want to run this as a one-off or as a regular task. I'd say a regular task largely because Synology might patch this out, they might change certain things along the way, and also this is a little bit easier than using PuTTY and uh, SSH and sudo and stuff like that. It's something a lot of people reached out to me on when I carried on with the um, hard drive update that Dave published on his GitHub recently. So for now, what we're gonna do is head into the control panel. From the control panel, we need to select task scheduler. From task scheduler, We've got the one I've already created while testing, so I'm just gonna delete that here just to show you exactly what happens. From there, we click Create. From there, we're gonna select a triggered task because we want this to kick off every time the system reboots, and then select User-Defined Script. From there, we're gonna give it a name. So in this case, I'm gonna call it Sino Graphics. From there, we're gonna make sure to select the root user because we need this during boot to have pretty much unlimited access to run this script. And then from there, make sure you've selected boot up. Next, go into task settings. And from here, we need to paste in that line there of exactly where this transcode underscore four underscore x25 dot sh resides on your system. Remember, I have deposited into this folder, but that might not be the case for you. If in doubt, find where you've unlocked, uh, you've dumped the file, find the sh file, right click it, select properties, and that will give you the location right the way down to the volume name and script. Also keep in mind that over here, on Dave's own listing, there is troubleshooting that I'm sure he'll add to, where if, for example, some of your directories, your shared areas have got spaces in the naming convention or other methodologies for uploading it, as well as the one using SSH and something like PuTTY are listed there. So I recommend you check that out if you're having difficulties. But at least for my sake, this directory is correct. So from there, I click OK. And as you can see, now the Synology is warning me that what I'm doing is a little bit outside the bounds of first party behavior. Now, this is probably a great time just to quickly highlight once again, that you are not using this system in a way that Synology themselves would like you to use it. Make of that statement what you will, but ultimately that means that, remember, you don't know who Dave is. You don't know me from Adam. You don't know any of the people involved in this but you've bought a Synology now. So keep that in mind when running scripts on your system, the intention of the people that create these things, myself included. Bottom line, what I'm saying is, be aware of what you're doing, make sure you've got your backups in place, and if you're gonna run unknown script on your NAS, understand that what you're doing might result in Synology not supporting you. Whether you believe in that, whether you agree with that, we could argue that till the end of the day, and I've got my own mixed feelings about it, but ultimately you are going to be using command line on a system that they might say you're using the software outside the bounds of the TNC. Again, TNC, 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 we could argue the toss on that. And by the way, my catch just appeared. You can probably hear the bell, but let's crack on. From here, you're gonna to need to enter your password and then from there, click submit. And there you go. We've now got that user-defined script. This will happen every time the system reboots to use this script. I'm gonna go ahead and run it for the first time anyway, and that will run that script that we've got from Dave there. Now, I could just go ahead and run Plex now, but I think just to be on the safe side, we should restart the system just to ensure that that script is going to kick in. This is gonna take about two to three minutes. You can keep an eye on the clock on the bottom if you like, but if you do encounter any issues, generally with any kind of uh, script that you have at boot, you typically then get an alert or a notification in the logs that will tell you something is amiss. So let's fast forward to the reboot of this system. Okay, so we've loaded back in. So let's go ahead and start logging back into our system. Uh, I may need to refresh some tabs. I maybe could have given it an extra minute or so because it has literally just rebooted. So we'll leave that there, and as we can see right now, we'll make our way into Plex, we'll also refresh that tab there, and we'll play ourselves at one of our HEVC files. Let's go for something a little different this time. We're gonna go here, we're gonna go for an HEVC file. This is a, a 30 megabits per second HEVC or H.265 file, and we're gonna go ahead and play it there. We're gonna open up at the bottom, and as you can see, we're playing the original quality there. But let's go ahead and convert it down to something mad, like 480p, and at the same time, refreshing this tab here, we're gonna have a little look, and as we can see, boom. 
Hardware Transcoding. That's what the HW stands for. We've now got access to hardware transcoding on our NAS. Now, keep in mind, from what I understand, this is not going to change how the system works with HEVC content. This is not about adding that license. This is about having the hardware uh, to do the graphical capabilities that that CPU arrives with, that uh, driver there. So let's go ahead and just do another one. Just double check we are all running as a treat. Let's go for that one there. Go for something a bit hefty. I would play licensed material, but unfortunately that would only set about harming the channel. It can be a real pain in the bum. So let's go ahead and play that one there. We've got it open up in original. Let's go for something ludicrous and go down to 240p. As we can see, it's still hanging on that previous playback there. But as you can see, once again, hardware transcoding enabled there. So just keep that in mind. And if you want at any time to remove this script, uh, you can go ahead back into the control panel, back into the scheduled task, right click and you can delete it. But just keep in mind, this will not undo what you have done uh, in terms of how it's loaded the driver in, not that you want to do that. Uh, and again, I'm gonna speak uh, in the background with Dave, just a real quick find out if it's worth users who don't wanna reinstate this again, whether it's worth deleting them, but of course, if Synology rolls out an update, chances are that they will perhaps modify things, particularly larger revision changes, like DSM uh, 7.2 into the DSM 7.3, that may also impact that. But this has been how to get hardware transcoding back on your Synology DS225 Plus and DS425 Plus. Once again, huge respect here to uh, Dave Russell over here, doing more of the Lord's work there for DIYing your way around your Synology NAS. And of course, another big shout out there to Luca over at Black Void. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, there's a guide as well. There's my own website, why not give it a quick plug. Also, it occurs to me now that some sod in the background might wonder why I didn't play the original file. It was literally just because I sort of wanted to do something different. But just to confirm, there is the same file from earlier on and it is being converted with hardware transcoding. Just wanted to add this here at the end in case anyone wants to raise that in the comments. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.